Did you miss this year's UCA conference? Well, here's your chance to join in with the live studio audience of our closing night, a made-for-podcast event. Welcome to the Unitarian Christian Alliance podcast, episode 61, Community Night, hashtag UCACon 2022. I'm Mark Kane. As we work out the timing for the editing and release of the presentation videos for those excellent papers, I'm going to share a few podcastable bits. Podcastable? Hmm. I'm going to share a few podcastable bits here and there, starting with the conference closer, Community Night. I designed that night for this podcast, and while I was a bit nervous doing something outside of the box for me, I really enjoyed it. It seems to have been a fitting conclusion to what was a friendly, laughing, and highly talkative event. I'll share portions from the opening night in later episodes. If you were there, I ask you for an audio clip. You can email me an audio file or click the link in the show notes. Say who you are, where you're from, and answer this question. What was unexpected or surprised you about that weekend? I look forward to hearing from you. We featured our Gold Conference partners each night before the sessions. Williamsburg Christadelphian Foundation on Thursday, opening night, Allegiance to the King and the Church of God General Conference on Friday night, then Spirit and Truth and Living Hope International Ministries on Saturday night. It was Living Hope which included a humorous segment during their 10 minutes, and that humor plays a part in the Community Night program. Naturally, I abhor the thought that you'd be confused. So, in your best interest, I will share the relevant portion of LHIM's presentation. Well, uh... I'm Sean Finnegan. This is my wife, Ruth Finnegan, and we're here to tell you a little bit about Living Hope International Ministries. Sean, I, I think we need an endorsement. Okay. Well, uh, who, do you th- who would you like to get to endorse us? Well, I've, I've thought about it, and the obvious choice to me is Dale Tuggy. He's the president of the UCA board, and... He's pretty famous, yeah. I think that would be great. PhD from Brown. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I don't think Dale Tucky would actually do it because he can't play favorites. He can't just endorse one sponsor over anyone else. That's ridiculous. Who do you have in mind? Who do I have in mind? Well, there is this one person, and I bet he would do it. Who is it? Tail Duggy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Tail Duggy, former professor of analytic philosophy and hosts of the famous podcast that rhymes with affinities. On the screen here is a near-perfectly disguised Will Barlow. Episode 50, Church Plant. Sitting in front of an impressive shelf of scholarly material. He looks almost exactly like one Dale Tuggy. And the $3 stick-on goatee is, oh, so lifelike. Speaking of affinities, I wanted to share with you about a church that I have a strong affinity for, Living Hope International Ministries. I want to tell you that Living Hope is really great. Thomas Aquinas once said that there are three levels of greatness, goodness, greatness, and absolute preeminence. In level two, there are 14 (laughs) sub-levels. How would I rate Living Hope? I would place them at level two, sub-level 12. Pretty great but not quite absolutely preeminent. (laughs) The humor continued, but in the interest of time, let's jump right to... All in all, I highly recommend Living Hope. I'm Tail Dougie, and I approve this message. (laughs) (laughs) The other item, which would feel like an inside joke without a bit of clarification, my older brother, Alan is the pastor at the church which hosted us. A few times during the weekend, individuals may have asked him about his relationship to me. Let's just say he doesn't really seem old at all. The problem is that I look just so much younger. It was an understandable mistake. The next voice you'll hear is the MC of the conference, Keegan Chandler, 
son of Hildy Chandler, episodes two through four, and author of the well-appreciated book, The God of Jesus. The book has been out of print for what seemed like forever, but finally, it's back. (laughs) Take it away, Keegan. And now for our main event this evening. Why is tonight different from all other nights? As a little Passover joke, if y'all didn't get that. (laughs) Tonight we are doing something a little bit different. Each night we've had a wonderful speaker give a wonderful presentation, but this evening Mark Cain has something called Community Night in store. Now, who is Mark Cain besides Alan's son? Sorry, I've been resisting. I have been fighting it all weekend, but no more. Sorry, Alan. Mark Cain has a bachelor's in theology from Atlanta Bible College and a bachelor's in computer science from Cleveland State University. Mark currently serves on the board of directors for the Unitarian Christian Alliance and also on the board of directors of the Church of God General Conference. You may all know him best as the host of the inimitable UCA podcast. Mark also works in a medical software company as a privacy officer and serves in several roles at the Church of the Open Bible in Bedford, Ohio, where he attends with his wife and sons. Again, tonight Mark has a very special event he'll be hosting for us to close out the official programming of this year's UCA conference. So please join me in a hearty welcome for Mark King. Thank you very much, Keegan. When I saw that he was reading one of those introductions, I thought, well, that's what's supposed to precede a theological paper, not this. I was almost going to say, don't do that. Just let me get up and start. But it was nice. Thank you. That's very nice. What you are all participating in is an experiment of grand proportions. I have done every podcast with just me and one occasionally two other people. It was all clean and edited and presented to you on a silver platter. Tonight, this is a podcast of a hundred and, a few people have left, so maybe 140 people all at the same time. So when you laugh, when you cough, you will be immortalized forever. (laughs) When you laugh. (laughs) Thank you, Anna. That was on cue. I, I love it. So during the course of this evening, I'm going to ask for you know, people to stand up if they're, you'll, you'll figure it out as you go, but I need a little bit of a commitment from you that if, if you kind of like stand up and I ask you to share something, that you would just go ahead and give me a few words if I walk up and put the microphone in your face, like Timmy Paul, would you do that? Yeah, I will. See how that works? So if you could all say, sure, I'll do that. Go ahead. Sure, I'll do that. I saw a few of you didn't say that. That's okay. I'll try not to call on you. I'll be walking around on the floor. I might ask you to come up here to help me out, but It's an audience participation program. It's about our community. It's about this weekend and everything that has happened. Before we get too far into that, I do need to ask you to do me a little bit of a favor. I I thought Tail Dougie was pretty good. (laughs) But I'm not sure he's good enough. I think he needs to practice, but we won't know unless we test it with true science. So if you have your apps and there's that ask a question, I would like if you're creative and you can think of something that Dale Tuggy would not say out loud. Keep it nice. If you you have that humorous bone in your body, you know who you are. You're like, oh, I I got it. Send it in as an ask a question on this evening's event and we're gonna accumulate it up and later on we're going to have a little test to see if Dale Tuggy can be discerned from Dale Tuggy. Was this weekend just amazing? I get, I I was pretty nervous about the whole thing because I had, this night was coming and that made me nervous. But talking to people, smiling, laughing and sharing and what you're doing, hearing about your stories, it's astounding. I almost would say technically this should not happen. This should not be possible that we could do this kind of thing. You know, we've often been asked, the UCA, you're like, well, are you a church? Like, if we were a church and we had a full statement of faith and all of our doctrines and everything laid out, 
would we have had all these people here making connections, doing what they're doing right now? No, because three quarters of you would have said, oh, that's not us. I won't come. But instead, we said, let's do something crazy. Let's just pick one thing and see what happens. Now, those other things, you're all going to go back to your homes and you're going to teach those things to your community, to your fellowship. And the people here who may just now realize, I want to join that fellowship, or I'm going to join that community, they're going to participate in that experience with you because you are an actual fellowship. We are just a handful of people thinking, let's make something crazy like this happen. And it happened. And you're all here. It's just, just amazing. When I stood up last year in front and I was like, looked out and I tried to start talking, I almost got choked up just for the fact that you were here and that we were going to have these discussions and I was going to get to meet you. It's just amazing. I'd like to give a special thank you to two people who helped out quite a few of the adults, Anna and Heidi. They're probably not even here because they're helping, right? They're, they, they were helping with the kids. I saw them running through the room dragging little horses with kids on them to entertain them. So if you see them, just thank them. Because there are some parents who, you know, like, what do you do when you have kids and you want to just talk theology? You know, it wasn't an official part of the program to, to guarantee that we had these people here, but they did it. So tell them thank you. And I want to thank Alan and the people here at the Lawrenceville Church of God. Just amazing. This, this was beautiful. So today, I, if you've already thought of your funny thing, you can go ahead and put that in, things Dale would not say. Today we're gonna interact with you, I'm gonna ask some questions, get a few of you to talk, and we're even going to have a, where are they now? It's a podcast follow-up with one of my guests that should be like a real interview, you're just gonna see it live, it's kinda like sausage being made. And I don't get the opportunity to edit before I give it to you, so that's why it's weird for me. But. I wanna talk about the talent that is in this room. I've met people who are doing things that just fascinate me. And I, you probably experienced this. You talk to some people and you're like, you do what? How, isn't it amazing? Just one example I wanna share because it's, it's kind of funny. But we have one person here who's here with us today. Josiah helped make this thing called a mixtape using a bit of the Perilous Trinity Deep Dive podcast, episode number one. Check this out. It's tough. Most will never do it, but some of you have. The Perilous Trinity Deep Dive. Christians who look into the doctrine of the Trinity I know. often don't like what they find. And by looking into it, it's looking for other views, reading stuff that doesn't agree with you, asking and mulling over hard questions, I'm not playing the whole thing. strained interpretations, the surprising details of its development, or the troubling history of how the Trinity spread was enforced. So, not that that is the most practical application of talent, but is that not amazing that that kind of thing can happen? <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> I just wanted an opportunity to play that. That's all right. Thank you, Josiah. So, this weekend we had some really neat workshops, and I'm going to ask uh, Amanda Dunn, who had helped with two workshops, if she could stand up and join me. And I would like, Amanda, as you come up, somebody from your class who's just bursting to say something about that. So you cannot come up alone. You know who you are, right? You were there. Okay. Would you like to come? Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Monica. I just wanted you to explain just briefly your experience with a group, how it went, and what you thought of it. Because not everybody was there. It was remarkable. Um, I got increasingly excited over the last few weeks as I prepared my workshops, just envisioning the conversations that I was going to get to have. And then today we had a panel discussion about homeschooling and Monica was graciously on the panel. And I sent each of the panelists a questionnaire a couple of weeks ago to get to know more of their story. And that's when I got really excited. Um, I was just floored. I could not wait to ask them questions and share their wisdom and their experience and their encouragement with everybody here. And I, I, feel, like, I feel like you blew it away today, Monica. Oh, well, 
moment for a hug. All right. It was just great sharing all these, you know, our experiences and all these moms, what we went through, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. So it was, it was a blessing just to be part of it. Mm-hmm. Did you have a, like, one moment, some particular moment where you're like, oh, wow. Anyone that was there knows that Diane and I had a moment. <laughs> um, Diane and I made a connection through the UCA that is just remarkable because our husbands served in the same tiny, tiny part of the military together, or not together, the same exact command. But her husband left just a, probably a few months before my husband got there. And I would have, what I would have given to have the friend and mentor that Diane was, I, I prayed for that person and I did not have that person. And then all these years later, I got to meet Diane through the UCA. And so it was incredible to have her on the panel and hear her story and learn from her today. That's awesome. Thank you guys. And we also had the biblical languages class. I'm just going to have maybe Johnny sneak up here. We decided to extend that into the second half. So one of the people who were just the most excited should be walking up now as well. So you know who you are. You want to raise your hand if you were in the class or if you're just willing to share? Okay. You guys. What? Right here. Come on up. We're going to get a word from both of you. So Johnny, I actually just met you not long ago. And when you told me you were working on the RIV project, I thought, this is my chance. I'm going to work out a workshop out of this. I said, Johnny, would you help with a workshop about languages? And you were rather excited to do so. Yeah, I, I was uh, super excited. Um, I kind of was thrown into this Unitarian world, but in the best way. So it, it was really great. I think it was really encouraging. I kind of categorized person one, two, and three of people who were thinking, how deep do I want to get into Greek or Hebrew? Um, and really tried to meet them where they're at and give them resources that were helpful. And one of the most helpful things was explaining um, what not to do with the biblical languages. Uh, so hopefully that was insightful. But That's good. I appreciate that. Okay, so who do we got over here? Hello, my name's Colin. All right, let's step out here just a little bit so that everybody can see us. Colin, I don't think I've even talked to you yet this weekend. No, I don't think you have. All right. Hi, Colin. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. What did you think of the class? I thought it was great. I love the tools that they gave us uh, because before I was looking at like different interlinears like Bible Hub, uh, but they threw some other ones out there. I thought that was really helpful. So I'm going to look at those. All right. Stepping up your game then, huh? Yep. Yeah. Nice. Well, Johnny, Colin, thank you so much for chop hopping up here and sharing what happened. I love it. So I met some interesting folks. These are people who said, this was the first time I have spent in person with other Unitarian Christians. The first time. Now think about that. You picked this conference as your opportunity to meet us. I'm humbled by that because that means to me we've been successful in creating a place for us to actually meet, regardless of a particular difference. This is a process for all of us, and we're going to go back and study and improve. Everybody who gets a chance to talk about things gets a chance to think through what they believe and why they believe it and work through it even more. And you, you've got to meet people to do it, which is amazing then that the people who hadn't been with Unitarian Christians picked this. It worked. You folks who came for the first time, let's just, you just stand up right now, and then you might as well just walk on up. Just go ahead and stand up. And... So this is the, oh my goodness, come on up. The whole family. <laughs> yep, go ahead, come up, line up on here. So just, I mean, for some of us, like myself, I grew up in a faith with Unitarian belief. And and you guys had not had an opportunity until today. <laughs> like they just found out. They're talking to each other. This was your first time? Yes. Juanita, where are you from? Michigan. What was your reason to come? Curiosity, I guess. I, I, um, it just intrigued me, the, the invitation, I, knowing that it was here. And I, I didn't know what to expect. And I'm just 
overwhelmed and humbled at so many people that believe the, the Unitarian way. Well, it was great to meet you, and we got to sit and talk for a while. I've talked with a lot of you, and she was a great conversation. And thank you, Juanita. Mark, I like this guy's name. Mark, tell me about how you ended up here. Well, I actually thought it was a software conference. Oh. There's so many, so many developers, but... Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he, he's kidding. No, I, I came to the Unitarian position, you know, four to five years ago and, and uh, never met a, another Unitarian. I was just kind of theologically lonely and just, it exceeded all my expectations to come here. And yeah, it's just, just been great. That's fantastic. And I got to uh, talk to Dale Tuggy about bivalence and Molinism. So. Oh, that's probably why most of you came. Bivalence and Molinism. Mo no. Okay. Vanessa, you're from? I am from California. All right. And how did you end up invited here? Well, um, about a year ago, I started reading the Bible all by myself, and I um, came to the Unitarian understanding of things. And when everything else was un like explained to me, I had no idea I was part of this group. And when I started hearing that there were so many others just like me, I had to meet you guys and, you know, came out here to get baptized as well. So. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Woo, Vanessa. All right, Richard. Okay. So I'm from Ohio. Just down the road. Like, how, how down the road? It took us an hour and 10 minutes to get here today from Columbus. Okay, from Columbus. Yeah, yeah. So, my story is my father is clergy, my grandfather was clergy, and my great grandfather was clergy. Trinitarian, denominational, but almost 50 years ago, I walked away from that and did not believe Jesus was God anymore. But I didn't know I was Unitarian until last year. <laughs> I didn't know that was the, the, the word. And, and actually, about a year ago, when you had the conference, mm -hmm. I heard about the conference and just kind of got introduced that way, but came this year. Okay. So how could I not disclose? Yeah, you're an hour and a half away. You, you got to do that. Fantastic. Thank you, Richard. So this is the Grable family. Um, Juanita, hello. Hello. You guys are from? California. Tell me who came with you. Uh, my three teenagers. <laughs> three. And my husband. <laughs> oh, yeah, and the husband, too. <laughs> He's a teenager at heart, so it'd be four One of the teenagers is Anna, who is helping with some of the kids, so that's why she's not here at the moment. You came all the way from California. What was your impetus to do that? I'll ask Jonathan. Yeah, we've been on a, a spiritual search journey trying to find out uh, what truth is. And we left the church a number of years ago and have been just floating. And um, last, uh, two, last two years, we've really uh, come back with a lot of um, passion to try and find out what, what to believe and how to make sense out of what the Bible says. And... Previously, we were really confused from the Trinitarian uh, perspective that we were raised in and a number of, the, number of other theologies and doctrines. And so um, finding some of the different podcasters, some of the different resources, and then finding out that there's a conference, I said, we got to get out there. And you brought your family. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> All right. I got Jeremiah and Bridger. And when I first met them at the UCA pre-party, I was like, Wait, teenagers came to this? Are they just coming because they were drug along? Were you just drug along? Uh, it was both. <laughs> <laughs> it's both drug. So, Jeremiah. Yeah. How old are you, Jeremiah? 15. Did you participate in some of the activities, like a theology? Were you engaged in this? Uh, like, if this... Yeah. Like, because, I mean, like young kids, like, ah, they're not going to do this. Yes, I was, I was in the uh, language class with Johnny and... Um, that was super interesting. I was in the, yeah, I, I was totally into it. So I really enjoyed it. That's great. Yeah. Okay. And Bridger, how about you? Yeah, I was not drug along. Like my parents invited me and then I totally wanted to go. So <laughs> <laughs> yay. What was a, what a highlight of this weekend for you? Um, meeting everybody, you know, just getting to talk to people that believe like the same thing. Mm -hmm. How old are you? I'm 17. 17. Isn't that amazing? I love it. 
All right, you guys, thank you. You can go back and sit down. You're all very gracious to get up and put yourself on the spot like that. That's 10 points. Redeemable at Best Buy. Well, speaking of the isolated people, one of our workshops was actually about organizing online fellowships, which for some of these folks still might be the only way they can connect. John Brown and John Ely and Kenny Willenberg. You know what's happening. Yeah, go ahead and get up. You had a class on organizing this kind of thing. You know, when I'd heard what you guys did for your fellowships, I was like, you've thought this through, you've learned things, and you've, you've made some adaptations to help achieve that. Now, we're not going to have you explain all that right here, but no, wait, nobody came up. Who was in your class who would be glad to make you not feel so alone here? Who was there? John Nate, we got a hand. Thank you, Nate. <laughs> all right. In short, what was this workshop about then? The workshop was about how to create and lead an online fellowship. By the way, this John Brown, what was one of the highlights or interesting experiences of, this, of, of your class that felt like it really made a connection? We had a lot of people in the class from uh, existing online Bible fellowships who were really helpful in explaining how it works, what it's like. And uh, really, I think one of my goals for the workshop was to encourage people that they can do this. They can start an online fellowship. They can be of service. It can look 20 different ways, however they want. And um, just having people there that I have fellowshiped with online to support that was really great. I think as we grow, there will be more and more people who discover what's going on and want a fellowship. And I'm guessing that your particular group wouldn't be able to handle, say, 200 people in one Zoom call. Is that about an accurate statement? That's quite accurate. So what we would need, if virtual fellowships are the only thing we can do for those folks, would be, what would be the answer to that problem? Lots more fellowships. I love it. Nate, you were there in that class. Yep. What, what were your thoughts? One thing that I really like to hear from a number of people, including myself, is that it's okay to feel weird about it at first. <laughs> That's normal. That's perfectly normal. And you get used to it and you realize this is great because technology gives us the ability to, to stay connected when we're far apart. I'm pretty sure Paul would have probably killed for that. Um, I think he would love to be able to instantly send his letters to, to who he was speaking to. So that's one thing that I, I really liked about it. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, when Paul wrote the book of Romans, he's like, I'm writing this out for you, sending this ahead. If all goes well, we'll eventually talk. Can you imagine if he said, here's my link. <laughs> Click this. We'll say that again, just in case they missed that. Paul would have had a podcast. Yes. He, he would have clearly had a podcast. Well, thank you very much, John. That was a great workshop. I appreciate you and John and Kenny Willenberg helping out to get that done. That was fantastic. All right, you can go sit down. Thank you. Oh, I, you know, I had one more question, and it's on my paper. I was going to ask you, John, of all the presentations... Did you have a favorite presentation? I'm just curious. My wife presented and she did a fantastic job. It was her first time ever. I'm so proud of her. All right. You know, they say like ask questions you already know the answers to. That's what that was right there. We had a content creator round table uh, right up here on the stage. We created this loop. It was kind of a wing it kind of a thing. like. Brandon had an idea of what it would be. I kind of had an idea of what it would be. We're talking podcasters, YouTubers, people who are putting out stuff right now. Like, what could we do to help? So we brought it in here and said, no, let's just let people come in. We did not have a microphone on because we didn't have time to wire up everybody or to get microphones around. But I will say this, having had people sit in here and listen to us talk and then be able to turn to the audience and ask questions like, you know, how many people knew some of these folks up here had content? and seeing just all these hands go up. That's when we knew like, okay, this is a practical, valuable tool, getting people in a room and talking about what we're doing as content creators. There were a lot of people who didn't know who these folks were, or not all of the folks, you knew some of them. What that tells me is we can do a better job of engaging the community more broadly. Like I could talk about Sam's podcast. That, that experience just revealed to me Here's what we need to do next year. Next year, we need to do it deliberately. 
make sure there's enough microphones so that we can all hear, and then even have a runner. So when somebody in the back row has a question, we're sure to all hear it. And just do this again. It was phenomenal. A couple things came out of that discussion, and I'm gonna share these with you now because maybe the person who does this is sitting in the room and just needed the impetus to do it. Wouldn't it be great if we had a podcast, because you know the podcasts we have, they each have kind of their interesting niches. You know, they, Dale's is Dale. And oh, <laughs> he knows, he knows he's Dale. And they're just all interesting. But we, somebody had suggested something that is about practical implications of Christ's humanity. And I, I immediately felt like devotionals. You know, you listen to a devotional and it should impact your day. It sets your mind in order, puts you in the right direction, and you can move in your life with that knowledge. Having a podcast where Christ's humanity is brought into that in a regular way where you can hear it and think about it, I think that's a fantastic idea. And because all the people up on that stage had infinite time, we're probably just going to do it ourselves. Actually, no. Maybe out there is somebody thinking, that's what I was needing. Even my own experience with podcasts, I had this idea I would do a podcast one day, and I just decision paralysis. You have all these things you could do. I've, I could talk about all the things I'm interested in. I could do this. I could do this. And then a year goes by and I hadn't done a podcast. But when the other guy said, well, 2020 conference was canceled. What can we do instead? Mark, weren't you going to do a podcast? Why don't we do a UCA podcast? And you know, it was the constriction of the possibilities to something specifically meaningful that gave me the impetus to do it. If you just think, oh, I could do something, you'll just think that for a long time. But if you think, I could do that one thing and I could do that really well, you make something that's specific. Another example, current events, like what's going on, but with our perspective in mind. So you could kind of incorporate that. Or I don't know how it would go, but man, that sounds interesting. Would you, would you find that fascinating? Yeah. I mean, you know, like I think about my own podcast, like I don't include current events because I intend it to be 10 years from now, somebody should listen to it. But what that means is I entirely don't include current events. Somebody else might, and they might actually like to do that. Maybe they're sitting in this room. And then one really cool idea was a week in review. Like if somebody just said, hey, this week in Unitarian Christianity, Dale Tuggy interviewed with William Lane Craig, and then this happened here, and then this happened here, and it would just be this little bit you could catch at the end of a week or the end of every two weeks. I thought, that's fantastic. So I wanted to share those things. That's just a little bit of what being together made happen. Would we have thought through this stuff? Would we have interacted with the audience and asked questions if we all just stayed at home? Nope. So that was fantastic. So thank you to the panel that shared. Thank you to those who were interacting at that time. It was really great. Now, I, I want to pick another group in this crowd. Think back to when you first finally said, I am no longer Trinitarian. I believe Jesus was actually a human. And you had that moment, like, wow. I think of Hildy's moment, if you've heard Hildy's story. Think back to when that happened. If you had become a Unitarian Christian within the last five years, could you stand up? All right. Oh, you don't sit back down. I saw you start to stand up, and you're like, wait a minute. Okay. Within the last five years. Okay. That's, that's amazing. How about within the last four years? And if you can't do the math, I won't get upset if you are slightly wrong. Within the last four years? Okay. Last three years? All right. Last two years? Okay. Wait, if your whole family is all at the same time, that's interesting. You just do everything as a unit? <laughs> okay, what, what was that I said? Did I just say two years? Okay, well, last year. One, two, three, three, okay. Why don't you three come up here for a moment? They come to this understanding within the last year, like how long ago was it for you, Kevin? March. March. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, where are you from? <laughs> You're from where, Kevin? Uh, San Antonio. Texas, okay. What happened in March? I mean, the short version. Um, actually, I read Keegan Chandler's book. My mother gave me a copy of it. So I'd like to say I read it all 
for myself and came to the realization, but I was basically led to water and I drank. But <laughs> anyway, uh, she, she kind of brought me to the understanding and so I decided to bring her. Okay, point to your mother. Hey. <laughs> Fantastic. And Bridger, you came with your family, but apparently you were slow, because uh, they didn't come up here with you. Um, you're, you drug your feet. What happened? I just drug my feet. I, mean, I, I it, it didn't click. Though. It didn't click. When, so when was it then? When did you, eight months ago. Eight months ago. All right. And Colin, you were just up here a minute ago. A little over a year. A little over. So a year. I would say a year and like three or four months. Okay. What happened? Well, I joined a Discord server and I didn't know it was Unitarian at the time, and I had my Trinitarian arguments and uh, yeah, they just I couldn't answer their arguments and from that point on. I was Unitarian. <laughs> nice. Well, that's amazing. Okay, well, hold on a second. Don't, don't go anywhere yet. Because I was going to say, because you were so new, there was no chance you have a copy of a particular book. But then I found out you were gifted a copy of this book. So, Kevin, please ignore the next few moments that happened. Johnny, what did they win? You won a brand new book. This copy of God of Jesus in Light of Christian Dogma by Keegan Chandler will bring you hours of joy. Two flaps of glossy printed cardstock come together to give you a timeless classic book of words. Show it off to your friends, use it as a centerpiece, or sit back and relax in heretical comfort. It's God of Jesus by Keegan Chandler. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> if, would you like another copy? Would you Somebody else should have it. Okay, all right, because you have already read it, so that, you, you, you fooled me there, Kevin. But nice job. Thank you guys for coming. There you go. Congratulations. <laughs> I really didn't expect that. Oh, she doesn't have the... We have an extra giveaway for somebody who almost was still standing when I said the one year. She was not sure. She was doing the mental math in her head. That was, that was Vanessa who was just up here earlier. So, all right. I, I'd like to uh, ask Rowan to come up. Um, he technically came the furthest, but only if you allow for, wait, how many years was it you came from? Uh, 11 years ago, I came from Australia. I just wanted to hear his voice. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's really all I wanted to do, Rowan. Okay, <laughs> no, no, don't go away, wait. Oh. <laughs> okay. So you're from where? I'm from Australia, but I live uh, just north of Seattle. You, th you did still come a long distance. That's amazing. You didn't drive that, did you? No, I flew. Okay. No, it, no, it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit far from the planes I fly. Okay. You fly planes? I do. Cessnas. So this would be a couple of days to get here, and I haven't got that sort of time. That's fantastic. All right. Well, you, when we were talking, you had said you'd been to one other event like this. This was the theology conference in Atlanta. Yep. And how long ago was that? That was May 2018, so four and a half years ago. Okay. And as we talked, I could sense that there was a difference for you in your experience, how you were and how things were at that time versus now. I'd just, I'd like to ask you to describe that in short, because I thought it was interesting. Yeah, sure. So at the time I was really new, not even sure, completely sure I was in. Um, and I guess the final test for me, so, you know, there's the Bible side of things, and I've, I've been reading the Bible for a few years, um, my whole life, and um, so I was getting pretty convinced there, but there's the spiritual side of things too and connections with people. And, you know, I grew up Anglican with the creeds, so I had this idea of what a cult looked like. And, you know, I found myself sort of really drawn to this cultish idea. Ooh. I wanted to meet the people. You had to be sure. I had to meet the people and sort of get a feel, a spiritual feel. You know, you connect with people and you can, you know, we've all been manipulated before at times, you know, late night TV, you'll buy the, something for the steak knife and as an example. Yes, yes. Um, so I came to that with a sort of a dipping my toe effect in. I met Dale, I met uh, Keegan, um, I met uh, Brandon and, I mean, they're good guys. I met a, a bunch of people, Randy and Carl, you know, you know those guys, they're um, awesome people. And I kept in touch and social media helped just continue that. So now it's very different. So this experience for you, comfortable? Oh, absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, on the, uh, on the cult scale, 
where where do we fall? I'm just curious. Well, I'm I'm coming to terms with the fact of how much human history of Christian history has actually been driven the wrong direction by empire state powers that just shun dissension. And, and, you know, that's come up in some of these talks about how, you know, the Transylvania talk about how, you know, people's conscience were whipped into shape and it's brutal. And so I, you know, it's, it's the opposite side of that. But of course, I come from long uh, line of Anglicans and, and, and Trinitarians and uh, who are lovely people too, who I don't think would be like that. So I'm still wrestling with how all that plays out. Yeah, that's fascinating. Well, I appreciate you, Rowan, for coming. And thank you for sharing a few words. <laughs> Rowan, all the way from Australia via Seattle. I, I'd also like to ask um, Rachel Kaiser and John Kaiser if you could join me. Oh, no. Now, wait, Rachel, was that Rachel? Is Rachel's a daughter? I meant... Um, Holly, thank you. I, I wrote the wrong one. You, I saw Rachel's face. She was like, oh, no. <laughs> now it's fine. It's your parents now. Now you just have to worry about being embarrassed by what they say. Is, is it, yeah, that's a challenge, she says. So what I, what I appreciate about these guys, last year at the conference, on I think it was the last night, we sat down at the table and talked about what you thought we could do better, and you were just really harsh. No, it was, it was just an honest conversation about like, hey, this, we could do this, we could do that. And it just meant so much to me because it made me really think about where could we go next year. And I'm just curious, now that we went here next year, did we achieve anything that you thought we might need to achieve? John. Boy, what a tough question. <laughs> okay, you want an easier one? No, I, I like that question. Yeah. Um, I kind of wondered if you were using my critique as your cheat sheet for your planning for this year? Maybe. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of the things that I talked about last year was I felt like the UCA podcast did a really good job of being non-theological, being community. Um, we heard women's voices, which was something different. You know, the podcasts that we tend to get tend to be male. Um, so it was just your podcast, you know, there were many women on it, and I thought that was wonderful. And so I, I encourage you to have more women <laughs> speak. Yeah. One of the things that we needed was more community, and I think you did a wonderful job. And then the other thing was, um, I know that there's many diverse groups here, and in some ways there's perhaps some hard feelings between various people. I don't know. Reconciliation, I think, is a big part of this, right? We have to figure out how to work together because we intend to live forever together. So we might as well get started on it now, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And, and, I'm, and Holly uh, was in that conversation, too, and... I just appreciated it. I'm not going to ask you to add any more about that, but I just wanted to say thank you for helping with the translation, and I mean the, the editing for the book on, why can't I think of the name? Dynamic Monarchism. Dynamic Monarchism, yes. I'm excited about that coming out, and how did you, did you just connect because you were here? Um, it was actually started last year at the last conference. My husband was talking to Dale, and he knows that I'm kind of, like have this proofreading superpower sort of and um, introduced me to him and I volunteered and Keegan called me or emailed me and asked me to start looking over some things. The appreciation is very high for all the editing. There was a lot of work to be done on that. So you two, Kaisers, thank you so much for your input and for being here and coming back again. <laughs> thank you, John. Thank you. All right, this time we're going to play our game, Dale Tuggy and, and Will. Here's what you're going to do. Follow me up. We're just going to pick, I think just three will be fine. And this is going to be a test of who is the better Dale Tuggy. Yes. Will is going to try to impersonate Dale Tuggy, saying something that Dale Tuggy doesn't say. You're going to actually go behind the hidden curtain, and Brandon is going to ask you to each 
say a phrase that you would never actually say. And then we're going to, as a crowd, guess whether it's person A or person B, and then we'll find out is Will really as good at this as he thinks he is. All right, you got, got one? Yep, I think we're ready. All right, All listen right. closely. I'm gonna try and randomize this. All right. I love to listen to gangster rap music. <laughs> okay, that was A. B? I love to listen to gangster rap music. Okay, all right. So if you think A was Dale Tuggy, clap your hands. If you think B was Dale Tuggy, clap your hands. Ooh. Oh. Okay, well, maybe the second one will be better. Okay, try, try again. The hypostatic union is completely coherent. All right. The hypostatic union is completely coherent. Okay. If you think A was Dale Tuggy, clap your hands. <laughs> All right. B? Oh, boy. All right. I, I think I'm sensing a pattern here. All right. One last one, Brandon. What do we got? Tuggy is like the coolest sounding name of all time. <laughs> Tuggy is like the coolest sounding name of all time. Okay. <laughs> I can't ask the question. Who thought A was Dale Tuggy? All right, B. What? They, got the Dale Tuggy on that one. they thought B was Dale Tuggy. Were they right? Oh, yeah, okay. All right, you can let them out. Thank the, the first one was awkward Dale Tuggy. The second one was normal Dale Tuggy. Oh. Oh, wait, that was both Dale Tuggy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey. You cheated. Yeah, you cheated. You cheated. All right. One thing happened this weekend that I completely didn't expect to happen, and I just want to mention that this is what this is for. Last night, I walked past, the light was on in one of the classrooms, and there was a group of people talking. I'm like, what is that? Timmy Paul, what was that? What did you do? Well, I would like to take all the credits, but uh, Theresa Dean really inspired me to uh, call on all the young people, because we are the church of tomorrow, that we get to know each other well, and we just share our experiences, how we came to this how things happen, what we like, what we disliked, what can be improved, those type of things. So it was amazing. It turned out to be even better than I thought. That's how many, you had like, what, 12, 15 people there? Around that uh, number. Yeah. That's fantastic. So raise your hand if you, were, if you were in that. Did you appreciate doing that? Just yell it out. What? That is great. And, and, I, and we didn't even have to put it on the schedule. Praise God. That's, there you go. Well, that's, that's the kind of thing that just doesn't happen unless you facilitate that. Now, because this is the live version of the UCA podcast, we are going to do a Where Are They Now segment with one of the former podcast guests. So this is a time when I'm going to ask Tom Husty to join me up on the stage. Where did the other microphone go? Brandon. All right. Yes. Okay. I, I meant to write down what episode number you were, but it's 55. It's 55. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And the reason you know is because how many times have you suggested somebody listen to it? Uh, I probably can't count. <laughs> I am a <laughs> tremendously good self promoter. A tremendously good. <laughs> yeah. But not arrogant. <laughs> right. I think that's important to note. Okay. Yes. Well, so he and I talked. We talked. The, the episode was called Meant to Be Understood. Yes. And he described. Uh, his, some of his experiences with other people, talking about his understanding of this and how it, it impacted him. Yes. And then, after a few months, I look at the numbers of the downloads. That's what you do with podcasts. You measure the downloads. And his show was like rocketing past all the others. His episode, done in 2022, is the fourth most listened to podcast of all the podcasts I've done. You're right up next to Hildy Chandler, and that's saying something. I imagine. Wow. Yeah. So in my church community, the Trinity is on our statement of faith. This church actually 
did not have a statement of faith until about the time I started to attend the church 40 years ago, which I think was probably an advantage at the, you know, earlier. But I'm coming now to the table, so to speak, with this understanding that there is only one God and that Jesus is God's human Messiah. Uh, initially, when I brought this to attention to my elder and a couple ministers, I began being shut down in discussions in Bible class. It's probably important to mention, I did a podcast interview with my good friend Mark here, who lives in my area, shortly after the Unitarian Christian Alliance Conference last year. Yes. And, well, I, I asked for a recording of it to review it before it was aired. I let my wife listen to it, and it really sounded like kind of a pity party. <laughs> so my wife told me, she says, that's not going to work. <laughs> so I asked Mark to cancel it. So, you know, I've, I've had compliments on the podcast, but I think you should know that the first one was scrapped. So I, I had an advantage that other people <laughs> do not have. Yes. yes. Definitely so the advantage. second time around, actually, I talked very little about myself, I think. Yeah. And it was, which is probably unusual for your podcast, right? I mean, there's a lot of personal experience. Yeah, a lot of so personal forth. experience. I really wanted to communicate the message that was most important to me in the hopes that this message could be delivered to friends and family, church members, in lieu of not being able to speak either directly or in a church setting. Right. Um, that's how that came about. And so you've been saying, hey, listen to this podcast. Yeah, listen that's kind of my way. I, I figured, I mean, you know, one thing I want to say, I guess by way of compliment, like the platforms that are being given through those that operate here, and I would definitely say like almost universally, everyone who contributes podcasts or uh, helps and supports has created, I mean, from my own personal experience, a tremendous support. Yeah. And it enables us actually to be empowered, just not to be crushed, but to deliver the message in a way that just can't be avoided. I mean, what can you do now? This almost 60-year-old man, me, has a podcast interview. This is like, <laughs> you know, one of those strange yes. things that happen. How in the world does this old man have a podcast interview that can be sent out and actually challenge people. Mm -hmm. But some, one of the things that came out of that, because that was a great explanation, yes. now that you started sharing with people, you ended up connected to some Amish people. Yeah, uh, the first thing I should mention was that um, there is a church in Massachusetts. This church is a church affiliated with my own, but they are completely African from Ghana, Africa. And one of the ministers from that church I became acquainted with three years ago, I got into a relationship where I could communicate with this minister. I sent him a copy of the podcast that we did. When he heard the podcast, he was very excited. It was on the topic of the image of God, which you've heard about by our dear Anna Brown here. Mm -hmm. She does a better job than me. But anyhow, <laughs> um, this man was so excited about this topic that he asked me to come and preach a sermon in his church. Now, I'm not a preacher. Mm -hmm. I'm a toolmaker. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I've never stood in front of a pulpit and preached a sermon. And I told him, I said, I'm not a preacher. He says, it doesn't matter. He says, you come, the Spirit of God will speak through you, deliver this message. So I, I agreed to do so. I think somewhere around that time, I, I asked Brother Sean Fittingen here, if he would accompany me, because again, <laughs> this is strange territory. <laughs> and um, my dear brother and now friend, um, he felt inspired, called to do so. And Timmy Ball came along and uh, Matthew Elton as well as a bonus. And so anyhow, um, what, what happened is I actually wanted to get some experience standing up and delivering a sermon before I wound up on the big stage in Massachusetts. Right. You needed um, test dummies is what you needed. I, yes. So uh, it happened that I asked two sources for this practice run. One was Mark's church, very small church of God congregation. I think there were probably eight people there at the time. Yeah, it was a small Very day. small. This was on Labor Day weekend, right? Mm -hmm. 
And I had also asked a single Amish family who I have done business with for 40 years, uh, where I buy my organic produce, if I could have a practice run with them too. Um, their boys actually asked me to come speak to them on a Sunday afternoon about the gospel message because I had had private conversations with them. When I asked their dad, he said, uh, well, can I call the relatives? And Amish, have, they have big families, okay? Yes, big so, families. And these are uh, Schwartz and Truber Amish. So they are probably, if not the most conservative sect of Amish, close to it. Okay. You would think that these are primitive people and like, you know, you start to speak the, like something deep spiritually, they're not going to get it. But so oftentimes we go into a situation where we have already our own preconceived ideas and expectations. And what I found out is these people had absolutely no conflict with anything I said. And I touched upon not just the, the one God thing. I think I, it was included sleep of the dead and, oh. and resurrection and like they're all on board, you know? Wow. And it happened there were, they were yeah, praise God for that. And so how, so it was in a house, but it was how, in a house. how many people finally came? So the Amish keep their services in a home typically. Okay. And the room was filled from one side to another. I, I'm guessing somewhere 36 to 40 people, I'm guessing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And uh, there, was, there was a window, the, the lighting was poor yeah. in there. That It was an overcast day, Sunday afternoon. And they said, well, whatever you want, do you want to stand up? But then I, so anyway, I sat down on a chair and they were all surrounding me. And I, I tried to make it a point to look at people's eyes while I, you know, try to cover the audience. Mm -hmm. So I find myself panning around as I was preaching to them. It was the same passage that I read in, in your church in the morning. I yep. drove straight there yep. and had the service in the afternoon. And... I found that they were very, very engaged. I mean, their, their focus was intently on me. The eye contact was there. So that was a very good sign. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, to mention, too, like, before I sat down, I mentioned, you know, I've got to tell you that this is very unusual for me to come and speak to you. And the response from the, the oldest man there, he's about 55, younger than myself, he said, this is also very strange for us. So... It was like something, you know, it bizarre was, on two ends. Of yeah. Scale. So anyhow, not the kind of thing you would expect to happen. Not the kind of thing you would expect normally. To happen. But you know, uh, I, I guess when you go into this terrain, uh, <laughs> we whoever challenges God with the gospel message should expect the unexpected. Yes. So I encourage you in this. Yes. <laughs> if right. I may. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> All right. Okay. When I found out the house is full of Amish people listening to this message, I was like, what are the chances? But that's what happens when you stick your neck out and you do these things. It's just profound. Tomorrow, there are several churches that are in the area. If you are still here tomorrow morning and you want to go and try one of those, I'd like the fellas from, and girls from each of the churches that I talked to earlier just to pop up real quick. I'd like you to at least be sure you connect a face to some of the people you might see at one of these churches. Now, in your app... It has the list of the churches, a little description of each. It has times, and you can tap on the address, and Google Maps pop up, and you can just drive right there. So because we're a little short on time, I just want you all to introduce yourself and what church you're from so that you will now know the face and connect it to the local church. Chuck Graham, Little Country Church. That voice sounds familiar, Chuck Graham. Episode 23. And, uh, oh, I, I, I won't say it. <laughs> By the way, I've not been on this podcast. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm Alan Kane, and I pastor Lawrenceville Church of God. If you need directions, I'll give them to you later. All right. Thank you, Alan. I'm Hannah Dean, and I'm from Pleasant Hill Church of God. Your dad, is Scott Dean, was here this weekend, but he couldn't be here tonight, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's Hannah Dean. You'll see her there if you go. And Kyle McLean, pastor of the North Hills Church of God. Thank you, guys. Now you've seen him. Thank you very much. As a closing thought, I just want you to understand that the reason that we're doing this is to do things to help you, to do what we couldn't quite do when we were isolated, when we were alone, when we were just a little pocket of, you know, six people who have this vision for this, 
this thing could change the world. But it's hard as six people to change the world. But it's not as hard when you're hundreds of people to do it. And we're targeting one particular thing. And I believe the reason we target that thing is not just because it's important, all truth is important, but there's something special about what happens when you poke through that barrier and, and you know, like the blinders fall off and people say, wait a minute. And they open up their scriptures. This makes sense. You know, we're telling people, we're giving them the Bible and saying there's aspects of it don't even try to understand. That's the message that this world is giving, or the Christians at least, of the Trinitarian persuasion. And we're saying, no, this can be understood. God revealed himself. Try it. And, and you people are finding it. Other people are finding it. This is an important message, not just because it's one thing that's true, but because when people crack that egg and open it up and find out what happens, they start to read their Bible fresh and they look at things and more things and more things. And it's just an amazing experience. It's bigger than just one doctrine. I'd like to thank you so much for coming this weekend. God bless you and your truth pursuits. And I hope this conference served you well. I had a great time and whew, I slept well that night. Remember, if you were there and especially if you recognize your voice in this commitment to participate. Sure, I'll do that. Go ahead. Then please send me an audio clip with your name, what state or country you're in, and something about the weekend which was unexpected or surprising. Send the audio file to podcast at unitarianchristianalliance.org or click record in the show notes. Let's keep the voices coming. You don't want too much of me. Also, remember, there's an email newsletter specifically for this podcast. I write a bit extra about each episode. Sometimes I let you in on thoughts and plans that those people don't get to hear. There's a link in the show notes or on the podcast page, podcast.unitarianchristianalliance.org. In upcoming episodes, we'll highlight some of the great things that connections, like the UCA, have helped to create. And we'll get to that amazing story about the former Latter-day Saint and much, much more. Maybe you know someone who was unsure about the conference. Like, would I enjoy it? Suggest this episode. It'll likely help them settle, one way or the other, on whether it's something for them to try in the future. Oh, I'll probably take a break again next year around this time, suspending the podcast as the conference preparations occupy my time. Thanks for waiting patiently. It's good to be back. May God bless you in your truth pursuits. I hope this podcast serves you well.